Guys, what's up? It is Doug. Welcome to another edition of Trigger King Tech. And today we are talking servo savers, specifically what are they and should you use one on your solid axle RC monster truck? Now, now while this video is monster truck specific, you can use the info really for any kind of RC vehicle. It's sort of the same thing, right? But I'm just talking monster trucks here. I just want to uh, clarify that up front. I've got an Axial uh, SMT10 Max D here, and you can see I'm going to have to get up close here. On this right here, this is a servo saver. So this is actually one of the most popular ones out there. This is a Kimbro black servo saver. Now, a servo saver in general, the idea is that you have it hooked up, uh, you know, directly on top of the servo, that arm, and in event of a, a system shock or something that would potentially break the servo, the servo saver will absorb the energy in it. And there are all kinds of different servo savers. Some have springs in them to absorb energy. Some have, uh, they're just multi parts and have easier inside pieces that collapse. There are just a lot of different kinds here. So uh, they all generally have the same idea though. In an event of, of impact, we'll just call it impact, uh, they are designed to save the servo. And by doing this, you will lose a servo saver. Typically it breaks or can be rebuilt or something, but the servo saver will go boom it will save your potentially, uh, you know, your expensive servo from going crap. So why would not everyone use them? Well, the reason everybody doesn't want to use them, and actually myself included, I've always found servo savers to be just a hair, a hair sluggish or feeling a little bit spongy. And I felt on a monster truck like this, it really, that effect is, uh, it's really exacerbated. You know, I've raced buggies and a bunch of other kind of RC vehicles. It's not as pronounced on like a two wheel drive buggy versus a big four wheel drive monster truck where the tires are the biggest thing on the vehicle. So here's an example of the opposite, which is just a horn, a servo horn, this is an aluminum horn. And what that does is eliminates all the slop, basically. It's an aluminum horn. So wherever that servo wants that, uh, you know, wants to turn that arm, it's going to. now. Uh, this is a very reactive setup. I like using this too. I have good servos in my trucks and the aluminum servo saver eliminates any slop. It creates a very tight steering unit. The problem is when you get in an event of a, a servo shock or a big collision, whatever, to where there's a lot of energy that hits that servo, well, that's where the servo is going to take the brunt of it because typically you're not going to shear off an aluminum arm. If you have done that, there's probably something else in the servo that's gone wrong too. Uh, but yes, that's where the servo absorbs the energy. So the big thing with this, if you're going to run with a straight servo like this, it's better in just racing applications. If you're gonna be freestyling or bashing a vehicle, you probably don't want a direct arm like this. It's just, it's not works, you know, it doesn't work good for that. Um, but if you're racing where you want that absolute crisp control, you want the crispest control, uh, servo horn might be for you and you might not want to mess with a saver. So I know some guys don't really tell the difference. Some can, I personally can, I like the direct horn, uh, but the saver is much safer and it will save your servo, hence the name, in the event of a collision. So, so hopefully that helps explain better what a servo saver is exactly. So uh, thank you guys very much for watching. If you have comments or questions below, leave them. I will try to do my best to answer and I'll see you soon on another Trigger King Tech.